Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The other night I was woken up by a very, very strange noise. One o'clock in the morning, in the pitch black, I woke up and I could hear this sound pretty close to my head and I didn't know what it was. To give you an idea of what it's like at night here, for those of you who may live in a town or a city, it's pitch black. Absolute darkness, unless the moon is shining. We do have a street lamp on my road, but it's switched off at 9 p.m. every night. There's no traffic. There's no people wandering around, coming back from a bar. It's black and silent. So still in this sort of half sleep, half wake, dreamy consciousness, I was lying in bed in the darkness, listening to this occasional noise very close to my head. In my house, it is not unusual to get the occasional mouse visitor. And at first, that's what I thought it was, that some mouse had got into my room and was rummaging around. But the noise didn't sound like a mouse. It was metallic. What the noise sounded like was like something slithering and then a metallic clunk and then it'd stop. Five, ten seconds later, it would do it again. Like this slither, clunk. And I'm lying there. No idea what it is. Next to my bed is a nightstand. And on it, I have a lamp. And I also keep my head torch. Because at night it is pitch black. And if I want to walk around without switching lights on and waking other people up, I put on my head torch and use that for light. The house is quite large so you do need a bit of light to move around. This noise, this slither and then this clunk, it continued and it continued and it went on for maybe two minutes. I had no idea what it could be and then I could hear the slithering going down beside the side of the bed and stopping and as if something was lifting something metal up and dropping it and then it would slither again down the side of the bed another clunk and eventually I heard lots of slithering lots of clunking and it stopped and it was at that point I realized what it was it was my earbud headphones which I keep on my nightstand what was strange about this, because first, my sceptical brain tries to debunk what is happening. And I thought gravity had caused the headphones to slide off. Obviously, I haven't put them stable enough on the headstand, so they've moved by gravity down to the ground. But that evening, I went to bed about half past ten. We go to bed quite early here because it gets dark early and you know, what are you going to do? This happened at one o'clock in the morning. Now, unless gravity had taken two and a half hours to start the process, it was doing it on its own. The other thing which confused my mind greatly was the sound was like something was picking up the headphones and dropping them again and again and again with maybe five ten second delays between each lift and drop it was at this point I realized something is not quite right this isn't normal I turned to my side still in the pitch black and said to whatever was doing this stop I reached down to the ground, still in the darkness, picked up my headphones, put them on the nightstand, made sure they're not going anywhere, and went back to sleep. 
You may dismiss this as it was gravity, that I hadn't put them in the right place and they were moving due to uncoiling of the cable, something similar to this, but you had to have been there. This went on for a goodly amount of time. I'm talking minutes with pauses. Whatever was doing this was doing it deliberately. Worse, it was doing it annoyingly, which is the reason I said stop. This isn't the first time I've had headphones move. When I'm using my computer, I use proper headphones. And I've been sitting there of an evening using my computer and I've watched them turning around. I've watched them go bounce, bounce and drop on the ground. And again, I've had to say to whatever invisible entity is doing this and trying to get my attention, stop and then pick them up and put them back on the desk. Some of you may even say something is trying to get my attention and it wishes to communicate. Now, had we have been somewhere else, say in some ancient basement of some medieval castle, or even somebody else's house, I probably would have initiated conversation, tried to find out more what this invisible entity wanted. But in my house, I have a rule. We don't bother them, and they don't bother us. Now my house is old. In World War II, it was occupied by the Germans. When we first got the property, we used to encounter different things quite regularly, including smells. But over the years, we've somehow come to some arrangement where they do their thing, we do our thing, and never the twain shall meet. Now that's not to say occasionally we don't see something, or especially hear something. Many times I've been sitting at my desk and I hear someone walk up the wooden stairs and I think it's my wife or one of my kids and I'll you know, say hi and there's nothing. Or hear someone walking down the corridor. What we do now is we just ignore it. They're not bothering us, we're not gonna bother them. So when something started playing with my headphones, it's obviously trying to get my attention really annoyingly so at one o'clock in the morning. What it wanted, why it was doing it, I'm not even going to ask. That's something I do outside of my property, not within. One thing that always really blows my mind, because I love watching real horror videos and real ghost videos and stuff, I used to be quite a big ghost hunter myself, is people film what is happening in their own homes. People start using Ouija board. People start using different forms of communication device, almost like white noise, to try and communicate with what's in their home. Don't do that. That just opens doors that very likely you're not capable of closing should you want to. For me, it is far better to put up certain talismans and sigils and other protective devices to keep my home clean. What's here can stay here as long as it doesn't bother us. But I don't want anything else in. And if you start opening doors, you are going to invite things in which you can't handle. That's why when you watch some of these regular series of people filming paranormal events in their homes, it escalates over time because chances are whatever was there originally has now been joined by multiple other entities. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know. I could tell you many stories of some of the things we've seen here. Some of them are quite surprising and smells. Ooh.
As always, be free.